Good afternoon and most welcome to an addition, an adjunct to the previous lecture, 1011. A little bit of landscape. Grapes butting away. I got inspired by Rappaport's most interesting presentation and what I want to pinpoint here is that um, Ian Mikirkus has also looked at this and I would say it's a fantastic compliment with Rappaport to Ian Mikilchrist for all of a sudden we don't have this difficulty with two different worlds uh, the world of the left hemisphere and the world of the right hemisphere. It is rather that the left hemisphere, the hemisphere's idea of a three-dimensional world, although Ian McKilchus often calls the world of the right hemisphere three-dimensional. So I would say that the three-dimensional world of the left hemisphere is more or less the same as the three-dimensional world of Descartes or Newton. And his description of more severe cases of left hemisphere dominance as in autism and schizophrenia gives an eerie picture of a desolate Sahara-like sterile world with three dimensions existing by themselves and the things in reality placed out in different distances and it seems that these distances were already there way before one started to look at them and uh, when you hear those those tales or those confessions it is like the, the skin beginning to curl and the stomach goes upside down it is utmost horrific descriptions, confessions, interviews coming from Ian McKilke's book, The Matter with Things. Scary that anybody lives in such a world and being that to that level detached. This is also the device of modernity as schizophrenia is a fairly recent occurrence and one of the details in schizophrenia is that the objects exist by themselves and that they have distances in between them. In reality, in quantum reality, if you like, those things appear after the quantum happening, the quantum measurement, not before. The question might be, which is first, the hen or the egg? I don't think it matters. They co-exist, they come spring into reality at the very same time. And I would say that is even one of the most important things to say about it. Just because the trauma of the Greek came up at the very same instant that the world changed, they haven't be it has not been able been possible to discern that there are two different things until quantum mechanics that we all of a sudden realized that a change of world is also a change of mentality not in the way that we look at the world and our representation of the world is different no that the quality of the world because the objective world is a scary world it's a world that there is no subject and since there is a subject always in space, take that away, you will cut off your own limbs, your own arms, the part of what is you, and you will most definitely tense, no longer be a functioning individual, nor being able to, uh, to think anymore. Maybe the most scary example was rather in the middle of the book of Ian McKeel Christ, this description of a young woman uh, suffering from schizophrenia and how she thought about the world. There were different 
take scenes and they were stable and they follow each other in a causal way. And she describes how she went to school. First she exited the door and then she went to the elevator and she went to the first floor and then she took a bus outside. And that way of describing is so eerie, so weird, so far from reality. And you understand she's sick. I think somewhere in the middle of the description she was really sick. Disjuncted from her, cut from her heart are the objects in her description. Can you imagine the schizo in that? Schizo means cutting. And especially since the cut is completely arbitrary. It is caused by her disease or is her disease. I would say the latter. Having a three dimensional well being in a cube is a very severe disease because it shows that then you cannot localize yourself. All of a sudden, how you stand is not, not a matter. Here is very straight so you can get a balance. Not knowing how you stand means you don't know anything about the world and the body directly goes into shock. And I would say that shock takes only microseconds to come into action. That is the trauma. And that, of course, is also the explanation for Brain in the Vat by John Searle or The Perspective from Nowhere by Thomas Nagel and The Kagit, uh, Cartesian Cogito Ergo Sum that you think without the body, where you are in the world doesn't matter. I think the cat would have been would he have been born 200 years later who would suffer from schizophrenia? But thanks to the environment be pretty sound, he didn't develop the last stage. Other eerie and scary tendencies is the idea, very common in different therapies like Feldenkrais, Alexander Technique, but also in New Age, that you saw somehow you can change your psyche, that the psyche is detached from the world somehow, and the world can remain the same, and uh, therefore you can, I think to, according to the logic of mechanical, classical mechanical ideas, you can remain in the objective world, but be better somehow. That's also absurd. If the world doesn't change to something better, you don't change. And by better world, I of course mean how space works, which is not a final point, because Klein models shows that space is something we learn eternally. No matter how small it is, it is never exhaustible. It is quite literally um, indefinite, unlocalizable, unlocalizable, and eternal take on space. Space is in itself eternal, doesn't have an end. I think a good tip here, climb model is not to circle. It is not a sphere, it's nothing like that. Those are things when we think about maybe a ball where a goldfish is swimming round, round, round. Don't think in those terms, those are wrong. Think about desert maybe and realizing for there to be a desert, it has to be an eternal non-ending space. Because everything that constitutes the desert, even if its vastness looked like it extends, extends in all direction, almost like the idea of the XYZ scheme, it is still the climb model. As possibly to be compared with a small cabinet, maybe in your own house, you feel it to be very small and closed, it isn't.
then you can jump to a conclusion and say almost like Blake that uh, in a little dust of sand the universe is stored in a moment eternity is present but it's a bit more to it for there to be a difference between the desert and the cabinet the small cabinet in your house they both have to be subject oriented subject and object has to be present otherwise you would just have homogeneous space and if you think objects are the most important you would lose the objects if you have objects like the poor schizophrenic has in his world with distances ready-made distances and you move about like in a three-dimensional hallway like in a game or something like that like in matrix the movie then you are lost to a certain degree it will be very hard for you to get back to reality you will be stuck in this no zone of three-dimensionality and since you neglect to take into uh, regard or priority the ground you're standing on thereby giving up your whole body mind system you will not be able to localize not one single thought everything is going to be mumbo jumbo because it's your up and your down your left your right that counts for knowing how to navigate the climb bottle and you are never ever no human being animal or anything not even a dust of sand has ever been cut out from space that has never happened so we are still in real space but we take it away we try to block it out thereby creating classical physics or the classical worldview by cutting the head off by tensing this is very important to understand there is always tensing going on here otherwise you can't block out the body and how you posit it in the same moment you learn how to untense the neck muscles and be balanced you will understand what thinking is but this is a sort of a very good proof that could be added to the book of Ian McIlchris to show that you can't be in reality you can't have thinking and it is absurd to say that you have thinking or planning or anything like that or memory because if you're not localized in the world it's a bit like I remember the movie, movie Midnight Express where a person get apprehended for carrying narcotics at the Istanbul airport and he's sent to incarceration and somehow in the process his punishment gets extended by 20 years something absurdly and he goes nuts of course and he's sent to prison and there is a man who says we are broken machines and we should be here and he gives up everything by starting to believe that saying that we are in three dimensional saying that to a patient if you're psychotherapist indirectly or directly whereas a parent saying that indirectly or directly to a child or teacher i was thinking for the case my friends i have two ones Elin and anna they got affected by this three-dimensional cosmos idea and of course it's not something you can experience you can't have it but you can still scare you being non-localized not being having an up and down is in itself a direct trauma and they both describe the experience in school as having this class where they learned the universe didn't have an up and down and they were not localized there when they directly in that very instant in that second got a shock that never left their system both are uh, on different medications and treatments and none of them has have recovered from it I tried to sue one of them Ellen, but just momentarily like saying soothing words to somebody who's 
up for the gallows and saying to him or her, it will be quick. It was the same consolation I could have given. That sort of a vain hope, because this idea of three dimensionality, which is a blocking out, will remain as so long as you block out your body. That was the lesson from Richard E. Lind. And that happened in history, 350 to 400 BC. It's also mentioned by Paul Firearm for the Iliad, where someone says something odd, says that he still has been offended by the king of Troy. I don't remember, it's not Agamemnon, I think it was. Mm. Uh, might be corrected by you, please leave a comment. And he still is, he writes, and he says that he was still offended, although everything was made in good. That was a turn somewhere in the thinking. It was weird, it was traumatizing. Everybody saw it as weird, but it became established to be traumatized. So in some angles it's very important to see classical physics not as a thing. In some other aspects it could be good to see it as a thing to come closer to it, sort of establish it and then sort of cut the Gordian knot. It needs to be done swiftly. But once you realize the subject has never ever left space, you will heal and you get space that is rewarding, understandable, not these crazy eerie pictures of firm objects and scenes that develop into each other. It's, it's just scary, it's just unbodily, which is probably the worst state anybody can be in. It is actually much worse than the gallows, because that means that you are living in constant terror. Not being localized means that you can never have a peace of mind or a peace of body. You are constantly fragmented, never at ease. Your thought constantly going in ways you have no control over whatsoever. So, I think Ian McKirkus is a very good person as a psychiatrist, is used to interpret patients' words or body postures or emotional outburst or tonality in the voice or whatever, face expressions. Try to interpret that because they cannot be read off directly. The person is sick. The process of understanding and communicating are almost always the most affected. But he somewhat got a senseless idea of that. And this is the same with classical physics. You cannot utterly understand what classical physics is. But you can get a bodily feeling for that. This nasty, ooh, really weird feeling of not being located, unease, not standing, probably on your toes, could be the heels, waggling, having the knees tensed your hands clenched, all those things, that is an absolute directly effect of classical X, Y, Z and T arrow. comes directly. It comes venomous, hard, like a thunderstorm letting its rain fall on your body so hard with hails and everything that you fall over. And then you constantly fall over and that becomes your natural state. And then all of a sudden you get these sickening ideas that your mind is detached from your body. It doesn't matter how you direct it, how you stand. It's a little bit like, it doesn't matter if I eat for a year or two, which is actually happened. I think it was, that was in Germany, people stopped to eat, starved themselves to death in the idea that food was not a necessary thing. Now that's not far from it. Once you go in that, you don't understand your own thinking. You cannot plan your thoughts, the thoughts just pops up and then afterwards post factum you call that thinking or something similar, rationality, because to yourself it sounded rational. Then you locked up into this solipsistic, completely subjective of you, which is so unnecessary because by taking in the surroundings, the background, 
where we are, you find these and you, found the gr you find the ground you're standing upon and all of a sudden everything balances up. I can't, in every this therapies I mentioned before, Fallen Price Alexander Technique or Psychotherapy or the New Age, I can't understand how any development could be made if space doesn't come into the action, space that you inhabit. Why is the outer world not important? The Klein bottle is a healing device. It makes us first interesting that it could be a greater world to live in, and then we understand it is a treasure hidden somewhere under the sand of some tropical island in the South Caribbean, maybe Tobago somewhere, where a pirate called Blackfoot or something similar hid it to be found. And it heals us. And everything becomes better. There's no loss here. And that makes climb up so much better than those harsh New Age series where you should take something away from you. Which is, uh, of course, from a classical view, the only sensible thing to cure anything by guilt, punishment, or something like that. Peel shame. And this is, still to this, the, uh, the method of public eye. Feel ashamed for you destroying the environment, for flying, for cycling, for uh, killing off bugs, whatever. There is no subject, there's no voluntary, everything should be automaticated outside. The pan panopticon is calling the shot. You are under the dominion of Sauron. Sauron in the Tale of the Rings. He's a despot, but he doesn't have any mercy whatsoever. I think the ideas in Tolkien's books came from this idea of technology. And I think it was unconsciously there as the terror of these machine-like creatures that actually are constructed in this sort of machine. But he, Tolkien didn't manage to point to what scared him. And I would say the scary thing is three-dimensionality and he doesn't get any more scary than that being in empty space and no wonder these girls I mentioned earlier in in Nana got this cosmic phobia as they call it. It is monstrously scary and it will hurt your body and it will be permanent. I think it could be healing from that. A healing that just not only says that you should do exercise. A healing that takes in the whole world view your connection to the universe as a starting point. Being disconnected to the universe is in itself the problem. And not consciously taking that problem up will make it worse. We need to address in these therapies the pre-established gestalt of separation of subject in front of object in space. That needs to be addressed. I'm completely convinced, and I think that's the key of healing humankind once again. And do that heal meant, I think Imakekius mentions the Greek civilization and the Roman civilization, and that they partly healed. This would be a complete healing because we will have the key how to enter into a healthier state. Healthy state which always involves changing the environment. Always. Objects are the symptoms or the cause. Both we need. So this is the addition. I hereby end the addition and say thank you very much. It's eight o'clock. Have a very pleasant afternoon or evening.